Welcome to Western Products Introduction to Snowplow Hydraulics. This demonstration is designed to help you understand the inner workings of our various snowplow hydraulic systems. We will begin by identifying the different hydraulic components that we use and how they appear in a hydraulic schematic. Next, we will cover key concepts and principles of hydraulics. Last but not least, we will break down the hydraulic circuit and demonstrate how each component works to make a functioning snowplow. A schematic is a line drawing made up of a series of symbols and connections that represent actual components in the hydraulic system. In short, they explain how a circuit functions. Being able to read schematics correctly is the most important element of hydraulic troubleshooting. We will use the Wideout Plow Hydraulic Schematic to identify these symbols. The symbol for a working hydraulic line is simply a section of straight line. Joining lines are represented by two straight lines with a connecting dot at their intersection. Crossing lines are represented by one line jumping over the other. A pilot line is represented by a series of dashes. The following symbols represent the reservoir, the filter, the hydraulic pump, the electric motor, and a relief valve. There are also symbols for solenoid cartridge valves, a check valve, orifice plates, and the quill. All of these symbols and more are shown in the hydraulic legend in the next section. The hydraulic legend can be found in each of our plow mechanics guides. It will provide you with a list of all the symbols and connections that are specific to that particular plow's hydraulic circuit. In the previous section, we identified the various symbols in the hydraulic legend. In the following sections, we will go through the hydraulic components one by one and describe what function they perform in the circuit. We will then demonstrate how each component works in a working system utilizing Automation Studio simulation software. For anything to move in a hydraulic system, it must first be supplied with flow. Cylinders can only extend or retract if flow is present. Hence the term, flow makes it go. In a hydraulic system, the flow is generated by the pump. We will demonstrate this using the hydraulic schematic of a straight blade plow. Pushing the raise button on the control activates the motor, which turns the pump, and generates flow, which is indicated by the moving lines and arrows on the hydraulic schematic. Hydraulic pumps produce flow, not pressure. It is not until flow from the pump is restricted that pressure starts to build. Therefore, pressure in a hydraulic system comes from resistance to flow. In the raised circuit, the primary resistance to flow is the weight of the plow. Watch the pressure climb on the main gauge as we slowly raise the plow. Note that the pump relief valve is set to 1750 PSI. Solenoid cartridge valves are a type of directional control valve that are used to start stop and change the direction of flow in a hydraulic circuit. These valves are typically designated by the number of possible flow paths. For example, a four-way valve would have four flow paths. We use several different versions of the two, three, and four-way valves in our hydraulic systems. Our straight blade plows have three solenoid cartridge valves, one two-way valve, labeled S1, one three-way valve, 
labeled S2, and one four-way valve, labeled S3. The possible flow paths for each valve are designated by the red check marks. The two-way valve, or S1, is used during the raise and lower circuit. For raise, fluid flows through the unshifted S1 valve on its way to the lift ramp. When you let go of the raise button, fluid gets trapped by the check ball that is built into the S1 valve. Lowering the plow shifts the S1 cartridge, opening the path for fluid to get back to tank. The three-way valve, or S2, is activated during the angle left and the angle right functions. The unshifted S2 valve is also used during the raise and lower functions. The four-way valve, or S3, is activated during angle left and also in raise. Due to its location in the circuit, fluid flows through the S3 valve in all functions. Flow control valves, such as the quill, are used to regulate the volume of oil supplied to different areas of the hydraulic system. Restricting the flow builds added resistance to the circuit, increasing pressure. The quill is an adjustable, non-compensated valve that we use to control the drop rate speed of the snowplow blade. In this example, the snowplow blade is already fully raised. Pushing the lower button highlights the typical amount of time it takes to drop the blade. We will raise the plow blade again fully and adjust the setting of the quill. By adjusting the quill inward, we can restrict the flow in the lower circuit, slowing down the drop rate of the snowplow blade. This can be used to help protect plowing surfaces such as paper blocks from damage or make plowing in a hospital zone quieter. Check valves are used to maintain the direction that fluid flows through a system. Typically, check valves allow free flow in one direction and block flow from the opposite direction. The bypass check valve is a component used in the raised lower circuit on ultramount straight blade plows. We will start by pushing the raise button on the snowplow control. Fluid moves through the shifted S3 cartridge through S2 and S1 cartridges to a junction point. At this point, the fluid takes the path of least resistance and rather than taking the potential higher resistance path through the quill, it pushes the ball off its seat on the bypass check valve on its way to the lift ram, raising the plow. Note that the S1 cartridge traps the high pressure fluid, keeping the blade raised. Pushing the lower button on the control shifts the S1 cartridge, giving the high pressure fluid a pathway back to tank. The return fluid pushes the check valve ball against its seat, forcing fluid through the quill on its way back to tank. Using the check valve in this circuit allows us to control the drop rate of the plow without adding to the amp draw in the race circuit by bypassing the quill. Pilot operated or PO check valves can be used when reverse flow is required to retract an opposing cylinder. This is accomplished by directing pilot pressure to open a check valve to create a path back to tank for the returning fluid. We will use the angle left circuit on a straight blade plow to demonstrate this function. Pushing the angle left button on the control shifts the S2 and S3 cartridges and sends fluid to the passenger side ram, extending it. At the same time, it is supplying pilot pressure to the PO check valve, which opens a path for the returning fluid from the driver side angle ram to get back to tank. The primary function of a relief valve is to protect the hydraulic system from excessive pressure. We use direct acting relief valves 
that divert fluid either to the opposing cylinder or directly back to tank. In this example, we will demonstrate how and when the pump relief kicks in to protect the system. Pushing the raise button on the control activates the pump, sending high pressure fluid to the lift rim, raising the plow. Once the plow is fully raised, the pressure will build to the pump relief setting and bypass directly to tank. In this example, we will show how the wing relief valve functions on a wide-out plow. The main pump relief valve setting is 2250 PSI, and the RV2 left wing relief valve is 1500 PSI. The wing reliefs are designed to protect the extend circuit only. We begin by pushing the left wing button on the plow control. Fluid from the pump flows through the shifted S8 cartridge and extends the left wing cylinder. When the cylinder is fully extended, the pressure will build to the RV2 leaf valve setting and bypass directly to tank. The orifice plates are a component that allow free flow in one direction and restricted flow in the other. These are currently used in the wide-out adjustable wing snowplow only. The orifice plates help eliminate chatter during wing retract functions that occur due to displacement differences of the double-acting wing cylinders. In this example, you can see that during the left wing extend function, the returning fluid, highlighted in blue, pushes the orifice plate and flows freely around it, rather than through it, on its path back to tank. Once again, reinforcing the fact that fluid will always take the path of least resistance. When the left wing is retracted, high pressure fluid is forced through the restriction in the orifice plate, limiting the flow and eliminating wing chatter. 